All right, let me do a little video on the cyanic bonding stuff because, as I said, we're going through the notes really quick because most of this is review. And um, there are a lot of you that have the flu, so you need to know what you're doing. First things first. Ionic bonding occurs when you have an atom of a metal and a non-metal. You need this combination because you need something with a low ionization energy, something that it's easy to remove electrons from, and something with a high electron affinity, something that stands to gain a lot when it gains electrons. What I mean by that is it becomes more stable when it gains electrons, and that's what nonmetals do. In this ionic bonding process, your metal will lose all its valence electrons. It has to lose the entire set. It can't lose a partial number because that would actually make it less stable than what it would have been to begin with. It'll form a positive ion. Losing electrons means you're losing negative charges. You'll end up with more protons than electrons, giving it the overall positive charge. resemble the noble gas that came before it. That is to say it will lose electrons and its number of electrons will decrease until it matches that of a noble gas. And it will lose an energy level in the process. As it loses those valence electrons, it loses its entire outermost energy level. Nonmetals are the opposite side of the story. They're going to gain. They're going to gain enough electrons to have eight in their outermost level. electrons form a negative ion when they do so they'll resemble the normal gas that comes after it That is to say, the number of electrons will increase to the point where it matches a noble gas. And as such, they don't lose energy levels. Well, enough of that boring stuff. Let's get right down to it. Let's get down to the stuff that matters. What are we just going to be able to do with this? So let's take a look at this little thing. This is a, not an assignment that I passed out in class. This is an old one I have. I might give it out to you as a study guide when we get closer to the test. Let's work through some things. We're going to take an element and we're going to find out if it's a metal or a nonmetal by looking at where it's at on the periodic table, how many valence electrons it has by looking at its group number. Based on these two things, we'll figure out what it needs to do to become stable in the ionic bonding process. We'll work out the number of protons and the number of electrons, and then we'll work the charge out mathematically. So let's start with sodium. First thing we need to do is figure out if it is a metal or a non-metal. Well, there it is. The metalloids are over here. It's definitely to the left of the metalloids. That makes it a metal. Next thing up is valence electrons. And there is sodium in group one. And as we know, the members of group one have one valence electron. Now because it's a metal, as I said before, it has to lose all of its valence electrons in order to become stable. And that's what it's going to do in ionic bonding. It's going to lose one electron. When it does this, the number of protons does not change. The number of protons is still equal to the atomic number. 
which would be 11. The old neutral atom, the protons and electrons are the same, had 11 of them. But now that we're going to lose one, the ion will have only 10. So we look to see what we did here to figure out what we're going to do there. For the equation, the positive charge is the number of protons. There are 11 of them, and each proton has a plus 1 charge. So the total positive charge in a sodium atom or ion is positive 11. And we're going to work out for the ion here, not the neutral atom, what the number of electrons in the charge is so we can figure out the overall charge. So to that, we're going to add negative 10. It is positive 11 plus negative 10. Positive coming from the protons, negative coming from the electrons, and we add those two things together. We end up with positive 1, which is the oxidation number and charge for sodium. Let's try chlorine. There it is. Chlorine, there's our metalloids, is on the right-hand side. That makes chlorine a non-metal. Now we need to figure out the number of valence electrons. There's chlorine. Group 17 means it has seven of them. Now these things together determine what we're going to answer here. It is a non-metal, and as I said before, and I'll probably say again, non-metals gain enough electrons to have eight. If we got seven, we need one more. Again, we got to work out some atomic structure stuff. First, the number of protons. That's the atomic number, 17. In the neutral atom, we will also have 17 electrons, but that's about to change because we're going to gain one, giving us 18 in the ion. Now for the charge math. Number of protons is the positive part, positive 17. For the negative part we're adding to it, it's right there under the ion, negative 18. Positive 17 plus negative 18 is negative 1, the charge or oxidation number for chlorine. In addition to all that fun and excitement, you have to work with the electron configurations. Remember when you're doing electron configurations, you have to know the order of orbitals. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p. Now before we can go to 3d, we have to fill up 4s. Then we can go back to 3D, then 4P, and then 5S. And that will cover everything that you need to be able to write electron configurations for in CP chemistry. So let's write some electron configurations. We're going to start with Na, and then we're going to do the Cl. First is the neutral configuration. For the neutral configuration, we go back to the first thing we did, where we had the neutral atom. And we see how many electrons it had. It had 11. So we got to put 11 electrons into this configuration. The first two go in 1s, because an s can only hold two. The next two go in 2s, because again, an s can only hold two. We're up to four. Next is 2p. P's can hold six. Two plus two is four, plus six is 10. One more to go. And it goes in 3s. Now for the ion's electron configuration, we go back to the number of electrons in the ion. There were 10 of them. So we're going to put 10 electrons in this configuration. Again, the first two go in 1s, because that's all it can hold. The next two go in 2s, because that's all it can hold. Then we have 2p, and we're going to fill it up with 6. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is the 10 that we need. Note, all we did was knock off that 3s1 that was at the end of the configuration, and that makes sense when we consider what it had to do to become stable. What it had to do to become stable was lose one electron. So basically, we just lopped that one electron off. 
At this point, we have 10 electrons. 10 electrons and its electron configuration would match the electron configuration of neon. I know you want to do more, so let's do chlorine because this is just well, it's a lot of fun, as you know. Let's start out with a neutral atom. The neutral atom, if I can get it in the screen here, I'm not watching the camera, is 17. So we got to put 17 electrons into our electron configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. That gets, that gets us up to 10. We still got some more to go. We got seven more to go. There's two more, so that's 12. Five more to go. They go right there, 3p5. P orbitals can hold six, but we don't have to fill it up if it's the last one. Just five in that one. Now we gotta look at the ion. The ion had 18. So again, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 takes me up to 10. 3s2 takes me up to 12. I got six more, and they all fit in that p orbital. See, what we did here is we just took that incomplete p orbital at the end, and we filled it up because that's what it takes to make it stable. And again, if we look back at what it did to become stable, that makes sense. It gained one electron. We were only at p5, so we could put that one new electron in p6. 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 6 is 18. And 18 is the pirate's favorite element, argon, R. That should be enough fun and excitement to get you through the first few things that we're doing here. I'll add some more as I review some more. I mean, we already do have a video for nomenclature, so I don't think I have to do another one for that. Uh, we already have a video for the crisscross method, so I don't think I have to do one for that. But I will do one eventually for... Lewis dot diagrams and modeling ionic bonding.